Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 167. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Magic Tricks 155 to 167. Hey, 167 is going to be one of the best videos we ever made. We're going to look at the basics of the if function and then look at 12 different examples of how to use the if function. Now, here it is. The, the if function can put one of two things in a cell. Now that's what it does. It's a logical formula that has a logical test and you put one of two things. The best way to learn about this is to think of a bonus. Here's Tina's sales for the month, 6,000. The question is, does she get the bonus? Well, first we've got to figure out what the hurdle is. You get a bonus if you sell $6,000 or more. So if her sales are greater than or equal to uh, the $6,000 hurdle. If that's true, then she gets 200. Otherwise, she gets zero. So the two things that we're going to put in this cell are zero or 200. Right? Now, before we do that, um, since the if function puts one or two things in the cell, you need to have a logical test that comes out either true or false. There it is, true or false one thing or another thing in the cell. Let's go ahead and look at a true-false formula first. Equals, and you ask the question, are Tina's sales greater than or equal to the hurdle? Control-Enter. Oh, that's true. Let's change her sales to 5,000. False. So it comes out true or false. So when it comes out true, when it comes out false, a zero is going in that cell. When it comes out Control Z. When it comes out true, we're going to put the 200 in the cell. So let's see how it works. Equals, and the great thing about the if function is they named it really smartly. It's just called if. Now you need a logical test and then the value to put in the cell if it's true and value if it's false. So the logical test will be our Tina's sales greater than or equal to the hurdle. There's the test. There's the screen tip. You need a comma, and then the, the rest of it's simple. What do you put in the cell if it's true? What do you put if, it, if it's false? So if it's true, we put 200. And then we put a comma, and it jumps, and the bold says value of false. Well, we put a 0. Close parentheses, Control-Enter. Control-Enter just keeps the cell highlighted. Now let's test it, and there's three things we should test. Below, 5,000, 0. Gets put in the cell. 6,000, that's right on. Oh, yeah, because we put a greater than or equal to, we have a nice boss, right? So if you get right on the hurdle, you get it. Now let's try above, 9,000, 90,000. So that's the easy way to learn the if. Now, let's, that's the beginning. Now let's look at lots of other things you can do with the if. Now we want to put one of two numbers in a cell. Up here, we had two numbers, but we typed one of them in. Let's see how to do two cell references. Now, in this situation, we have the unit sold hurdle of 1,000, and here's your um, unit you sold. So we'll use the if to put one of two things, 375 or $45. So you get the bonus, or if you don't make your hurdle, you still get 45 bucks. Equals if. Logical test is your sales greater than or equal to, because we have a nice boss, right? Greater than or equal to the hurdle. That's the logical test. Value if true. If that's true, we get 375. Comma, value if false, 45. Enter. And so there we go. If we now go back up to above or right on 1,000, and then above it 5,000. It works just fine. Puts one or two things in the cell. Now let's look at the next example. Instead of uh, numbers or cell references with numbers, we want to look at two text strings. Now here we have a net income statement. And when we have a uh, profit, we want net income. When we have a loss, we want net loss. And the way you determine that is revenues and expenses. You compare them. Now, we're going to do this two different ways. Because a lot of times when you have logical tests, there's not just one way to do it. Let's see one way to do it. Equals if. And let's ask the question, are revenues greater than or equal to expenses? If that's the case, there's the logical test. So we type a comma. Value of true. Well, if revenues are greater than or equal to, we put in quotes. Text has to be in quotes. Net income. End quote. Comma. Otherwise, the value of false is, and we have to put text in quotes, net loss. Now let's test it. Let's make it exactly right on 5,000. 
We tested, oh, and a net loss. Oh, that's 500. So we tested below. Now let's test right on. Oh, it says net income, which is we want, or above. So that formula works. Now let's try it from a different point of view, because there you, you don't have to do the same logic um, every single time. Equals if. And now instead of asking it our revenues, we're going to say our expenses greater than revenues. And notice we didn't put the equal sign, which means we type one less character. So this might be the, a, a better way. What do we want if expenses are a greater than revenues? Well, that's a net loss. So we put net loss in quotes. Otherwise, then we have net income. So notice you don't always have to have the same logical test. And it will always, in this case, these are equivalent, really, because they'll always give us the same label. I'm going to. Um, do right on, because we have to test three things, right? Oh, it works. And then below, five. Now, the next thing is we're going to see how to put one of two formulas in a cell. Because in accounting, you're not allowed to have that, right? When it says net loss, that implies the negative, so you don't want that. In this case, notice we have revenues minus expenses. What we really want in this case would be uh, expenses minus revenues. And it would yield a positive, which is would be uh, a better match with this negative label. I'm going to Control Z. Now let's come down here and do that. Equals if, and we'll do whichever one. Uh, let's do uh, revenues equals if. Let's do expenses greater than revenues. If that's the case, then we want what formula? This minus this. Otherwise, we want uh, revenues minus expenses. And we can audit this visually. There's blue, green, and then green, blue. So that looks good. Now let's test this. Let's do um, above 9,000. OK, net income. Let's do right on. Looks like we already did that one. Zero, and it still says net income. Let's do uh, 500. Oh, it says net loss and the proper formula there. You can see this already has that, that formula there. So that's how to put one of two formulas in a cell. Now, uh, let's see how to put a formula or a number. So this is a bonus situation. Here's your sales, and we want to calculate your bonus. It's either going to be uh, $4,000, I mean, sorry, your sales times whatever your uh, commission rate is, or zero. So there'll be a formula or zero equals if. And we're going to say your sales greater than or equal to the sales hurdle. If that's true, we take we put a comma and put your sales times the commission rate. So that's the formula. Otherwise, we're just going to type that 0 in. So that's how to put a formula or a number in. Now let's test it. Let's make this below. Let's make it $1. Sure enough, it's 0. Let's make it right on. And then we already saw above. Notice we're testing three things. Now, let's put one of two functions in a cell, not just a formula. What we want is every time we change this right here from sum, notice there's a label right there. You can see that label right there. But any time we change this, we want the function to change here. So equals if. And what is the test? Oh, is this cell right here? equal to, in quotes, SUM. Notice you could have done average, but I chose the shorter one, comma. If that's the case, then we want to do sum on this range right here. Otherwise, we want to do average on this range right here. So there it is, one of two functions based on a logical test in a cell. Control Enter. Let's try it. Click here, and then sum. There it is, sum equals 20. The average, the average equals 10. So that's one of two functions. Now let's see um, this one putting one of two cell ranges inside a function. What I want to do is add. And I have a drop down here. It says data 1 total. So I want to add these. But if I click on this, it would be data 2 total. So I'm going to say equals if. And you can pick whichever one you want. I'm going to click this one. Equals in quotes data to, end quote. So that's the test. If that's the case, then I want to, and I actually want to put a sum on the outside, sum. If that's the case, then data to, we want that range. Otherwise, we want this range. So that's a perfectly legitimate 
uh, use of the if to put one of two ranges into the sum function and then control enter. And we can test it. Data 1, and sure enough, it adds it up. Data 2, and it adds it up. All right, that's the end of part 1. We'll see you in part 2.